Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Today's episode of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by our bonus packages. Please go to MikeO'MaraShow.com and click on the bonus banner. You'll get access to all of our bonus content, and even better, you'll be helping out TMOS. So please, quit sucking, and we thank you. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeO'MaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Acute bronchitis Friday, ladies and gentlemen. I have to explain something here. We uh, we came into the studio, started taping at 9 o'clock Eastern, and uh, we were ready to do uh, that brand new exciting feature, It's Just Me. We uh, we got on track, and we had a couple of people that were ball busters that called uh, during the opening segment. Um, I got pretty vocal with a lot of them, and... Uh, uh, after the second one, we stopped tape and decided uh, we're going to take a little break from this for uh, for a second here. And I, I just wanted to reset and come back on and start the show and share with you uh, exactly where my mindset is uh, with the show. It, it, it's been pointed out to me that, uh, you know, these people that have been giving us a hard time since the big blow up with uh, Pony Boy going to Japan are a very vocal minority of people. In fact, everybody that has an opinion on it that you would read about or see is a minority of people that actually listen to this show. But at the same time, since that happened, uh, there has been a, an overall tone, and I read the social media, that has just uh, stuck in my craw, more so than maybe any time in my career. And uh, I think the reason for that is because the nature of what we do here on this podcast is a far more intimate form of communication than uh, I ever thought uh, I could have. I thought radio was as intimate as it gets. I was wrong. Podcasting is even more intimate. We have more relationships and more close relationships with people than we ever have before. So for the purpose of being honest, I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. Uh, we started out doing It's Just Me. A guy immediately was, uh, was calling in to, uh, to bust my chops about some sort of verbiage that I used. And uh, when you do live radio... Uh, and you do seven shows a week, you use a lot of verbiage, and it's not always perfect. And um, as many of you that listened all week know, I've been battling just a little uh, bronchitis. I went to the, uh, the old doc and got some uh, meds for it, so I've been dealing with that. But it's a, it's a cough, and you can come in here. It doesn't affect the way I talk. It affects the way I feel, but I'm, I'm really, it's nothing. Uh, relative to the large scale of things, it's nothing at all. But I wasn't in the mood because I've been under the weather for a week, and I got into it with this guy, and then we took another call, and it was, it was kind of disjointed, and then another ball-busting call uh, about me giving Oscar a hard time, and I just said, stop tape, just, just let's start again. Because I, I am, and I'll tell you the, the God's honest truth. When I stopped tape, I said to the guys, you know, I, I, I'm really not sure whether, whether I should just take a hiatus here, because it's gotten to me more than it's ever gotten to me before. What we do here is a lot of fun. And when I come in every day, it is a massive part of who I am and what I do. And I, uh, over, the, over the last couple of years, we have generated more content than any show I have ever done before, where we are with you almost every single day. Uh, even when uh, one guy takes a break, the other guys are here. You know, we will occasionally have a day, uh, but it doesn't happen as often as it used to. We're doing shows all the time, and um, it, it's hard to come to an audience and say, you know, you're getting to me. But uh, unfortunately, the very vocal and uh, minority has gotten to me. And, I, and I'm not too big to, to say, I'm bigger than life. I can take it. I know it comes with the territory. I know that when you do this for a living, you subject yourself. But today, combination of brand new feature A, feeling under the weather B, and reacting to what has been a pretty decent month of let's, let's take Mike to task on different things. And I'm talking about a small minority of you. The overwhelming majority of you have been extremely supportive. It just, I have to be honest, it got to me today. And it got to me to the extent where I said, you know, do I need to go away for a while? Do I need to do it? Because I really wanted to maybe reset and recharge my batteries. And very quickly, and th thanks to my wonderful coworkers, we all had a discussion about it, and we all kind of said, no, because what's that going to do? That, that's not going to do the audience any good, and it's probably not going to do us any good. We have regular schedules where we can all take downtime when we want to. I think the point that uh, we all kind of came together with was uh, 
We use the term, uh, if you don't, you know, if you get it, you're in the know, help us out. And I think when, especially when uh, Oscar comes to me with a brand new idea, and, and I knew, I think I said to it, Oscar, you said it. Yeah. We both knew it was not an original it, it, idea. We, yeah. we knew it had it, been it, done it, before. It, it, everything in radio has been remixed, yeah. but... It's all, remixed. All, it was our, our version of it. Also, and, if, you, if you don't mind, the, what we say on the show is if you're here, you get it, right? Yeah. Just to clarify. Right. And if, and I'm, and if I, my feeling is, and as a group, that some people aren't getting it. Well, it's, it seems that since we had the big blow up, and I'll be very, very honest with you, two things came to my attention that uh, there are people that don't like conflict that are like Rob Spiewak. Mm -hmm. In fact, they commiserate with Rob Spiewak. And a lot of people that gave me crap are very into Rob because they don't like, they like it to be puns and fluffy and life and Rob is a sweet guy and he adds that element to the show, which I think balances with you and me, Oscar. Absolutely. Very, very well. But they didn't like that. The other thing that came to my attention, and Oscar will probably be had to, glad to hear this because he hasn't, is that the people that disagree with me on a variety of issues took that opportunity to really get into the mix. And it really didn't have a lot to do with what happened with Pony. It had a lot more to do with the fact that they don't want me to, to talk about the current administration the way I talk about it. Now, listen, we created an entire show called Political Persuasions that's off in a separate corner so I could do that. But occasionally, if something's funny or if something really is stuck in my craw, like 17 children being killed, I'm going to come on uh, a show and talk about it. There's nothing I can do to change that DNA. And my ratings be damned if that happens. But... Because of all of the stuff that's been going on, who knows? Maybe it is the shooting at the school. Maybe it is the, 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 the way we are divided as a country now. But it's all gotten to a point where if you're going to come to me, I'm asking my audience. I'm not telling it because you have, a, you have, a, you have all the rights as a, as a listening audience. I don't. It's my job to serve you. It's my job to come here and provide you with a show and provide you with a moment. All right. And I want to do that better than anybody else. I want to come in here and I want to have a light moment where three guys bust each other's balls, four guys when Pony's in the mix, and we keep it light. And the only ball busting is between the three of us. And that's the way it goes. And maybe a funny listener that wants to do that as well. So coming to you and saying, I need your help is not something I'm accustomed to doing, but I'm doing it because I need a little help. I'd love to get a little help from the listening audience. And I just like people to uh, keep it light and enjoy it, okay? After, uh, you, you, it's, it, it does get to Oscar, it does get to Rob, it does get to me, after it goes on for a long period of time. Here's what we know. We know that this show has a tremendous following, and we know that this show is appreciated. We do. We know that. We also know that an incredibly vocal, vocal, loud minority of people tend to just hijack the narrative about this show all the time. And when it spills into a bit, it's just me that we're doing, it gets crazy. And I, I had a full-fledged moment where I just had to say, let's stop, let's regroup, and let's come on here and just tell our audience how I feel. Not Robin, this is not Robin Oscar, this is your boy Mike coming on here and saying this. Did the fact that I'm dealing with acute bronchitis have anything to do with it? Yeah, probably. Who's in a good mood when they're sick? Nobody. But at the same time, for me, since the Pony situation, which, by the way, I talked to Pony about, and we got through, did we work it out? Yeah, to the, to the best that something like that can be worked out. I mean, his feelings were hurt. His mother's feelings were hurt. And I legitimately felt bad about that. But after that, it just continued, and it continued. And I'm here to say that I want to keep it light, and I'd like to keep it light. And I'd like to do the show to the best of my ability. And I'm saying to the audience, you know, if we're going to start a brand new bit, and we're coming on with people that want to say, hey, Mike, when you said this, when you said this, because you know it's going to light my candle, congratulations. You, you, you know, you want to come on and sabotage a tiny little podcast. You know, well... You didn't sabotage it because we just stopped tape and start over again. And we could have kept going after I called you a hump and a douche and all the things I called you and an a-hole. 
But I chose not to because I just wanted to regroup because then we got another one that was just inarticulate and it didn't work and I was pissed and we moved on. So the, the, the subject of this little lecture and this little speech is sometimes I like to remind the audience that we're trying. I'm trying. <coughs> I'm trying to do my best. I'm trying to keep it light most of the time. I have things that bother me. Dead children bother me. I'm not going to shut up when that happens. But by and large, we come in here and we keep it fluffy and light. Now, we have a lot of calls that are standing by. I have no idea whether this is uh, it's just me or whether this is more people busting chops. But I will, I will risk the engage. phones right now All to right. engage and go to Jeff in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Jeff, you're on the Mike O'Mara Show. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Sorry Good for the lecture, but my <laughs> God, what a morning it's been. How are you, Jeff? I'm good, man. Speedy recovery to you. Thank you so much. I'm on antibiotics, as my mother used to say. <laughs> Biotics. Antibiotics. Is it and just me, or mm-hmm. is Rob's humor rubbing off on all of us? I would say Please. that happens. Mm. Dad, I get uh, a lot of dad yeah. humor once in a while that I'll, I'll roll off my tongue, and then I'm like, oh, no. It's like a cancer, sir. I have sir. a horrible example. Oh, okay, what was your okay, cancerous moment? My wife and I were driving to Savannah, Georgia, and we passed by Macon, Georgia. And my wife said, Macon, Georgia, what's there? And I said, oh, it's one of the biggest pork exporters in the country. And she said, what? <laughs> and I said, You've never heard of Macon Bacon? And I, <laughs> and I don't know where it came from. That's Rob's and humor. Wife... And, uh, may, may I jump in here? And uh, I know I'm trying to keep it light and fluffy. Uh, Rob's humor has not rubbed off on me, okay? I, not uh, at all. I, uh, that, 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 I, would, I would throw you out of the car at uh, 55 miles an hour. She would have stabbed that. me if she could have. Uh, yes, she uh, good. You know what? You tell that she's a good woman. God bless her, sir. Thank you for calling. And that's a legitimate it's just they me. So it is, it is just him then. You know, I, I look. I like a good pun occasionally, but not really. So, I know. so the answer is no. Me, I know. Me neither. Yeah, <laughs> me neither. Thank you very Which much. Which is why, so. Mike, I keep all the puns in a greenhouse safe. Right. Uh, <laughs> by the way, go ahead and send out another push notification, and uh, I would say something along the lines of, "We're going to try it again." Okay. Or no, or or calls on anything. I would welcome feedback mm-hmm. right now. Okay. okay. I would welcome feedback from the listeners too. It's a you know any anything they want to call on. I feel like reaching out. I've just. Talk to our, I, I've just implored our audience to understand the ABCs of me. And, and look, if you think I'm whining, yeah, maybe I am. But I don't think I, I'm just trying to tell you what I I don't feel. think it was whining at all. I think it was very, right. uh, very, you know, state of the facting. You're facting Stephanie of the state, in, stating uh, facts. What? Thank you. Stephanie in Sacramento, California, you're on the Mike O'Mara Show. Good morning, gentlemen. Hi. Good morning, Stephanie. Hey, I didn't hear the show. I was getting ready for work. But, Mike... Trump is a douchebag, and I am so sick of the people on the fan club attacking each other. It's really starting to piss me off. Okay, then, uh, then it's nice to know that you feel the the same way. I don't like, and I don't like the I don't like the the attacking on either side. Yeah, that's the truth. Me either. To you, I don't like it if somebody disagrees with me and then they get attacked. I think that gets uh, that gets a little old to me. And uh, I don't know. I think look, everybody is tense. Yes. Everybody Not is divided. Everybody said, is uptight, right? There is a saying in right. my family when I was growing up, it was time and place. And if something comes up that is not the right time or not the right place, you don't do it. And I don't yeah. think our fan club is the right place for political you know, discourse. Time and place, yeah. people. It's, it's kind of crazy. And yeah. I, I'm like, we're all supposed to be enjoying the same thing. Why are we attacking each other? Yeah, I understand that. And uh, Stephanie, God bless you. Thank you. And uh, well, continue sad. to listen. Um, can We're going to keep you it my, as light is as. Is it just me? Yes, you can tell us your is it just me. Okay. Go right ahead. Is it just me, or when my husband snores, does everybody want to smother him with a pillow? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commiserate with Stephanie because I like her, and I'm going to say it's not. It's uh, You're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. He should be killed. He should yeah. be murdered. I agree. <laughs> We'll, be, we'll be there in 20 minutes. Murder your husband. Thank you very much. That's it. That's uh, We're making progress here. Everything's uh, going quite well. Uh, let's go to Sean in uh, in Texas. Sean, you're on the Mike O'Mara Show. Good morning. Good morning, <laughs> Sean. Gentlemen. Good morning. <laughs> Listen, uh, I am so glad you were announcing the segment because I've actually had a topic that I wanted to call in and get your opinion on anyway. Go right ahead. Um, and this, so it's, a, it's just me, but um, I manage a liquor store here in Texas. It's a nice place. 
Yes, sir. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> and um, ever since I've been working for this company, people come into our store, grown adults, and they look at me with that desperate look in their eyes and say, can I use your bathroom? Hmm. And for some reason, that just drives me crazy that grown adults are out there. And it's not because I'm trying to be cruel about it. It's like it's our employee bathroom. It's not a public restroom. This isn't a place where people can. We're not a restaurant, you know. All right. Let me stop you there for a second, Sean. Do you have a sign up? Okay. Uh, I do not have a sign for restrooms or no restrooms, but I, sh- I am contemplating finally putting one up. Uh, Oscar, you have a thought on this? So it depends on the demographic. Um, if they're maybe having a booze run of sorts from a barbecue, or they got to go pick up something, they might have been drinking already as they swerve to your establishment. Bladders filled with yeah, so Bud They got to go right away, Green man, beer, before they refill. That's I think just my logic. Oscar points out a liquor store factor that, you know, they're coming to get refueled in some cases, which might mean However, full, full bladder, sir. Mm-hmm. That's the whole liquor store factor. Yeah, but I have to think that th- I agree with this guy. I think it's wrong. It's not a bathroom-driven business. A Starbucks is where you go if you need to take a leak. People a live McDonald's. in the bathroom down there. Yeah, you go to yeah. a place like that. Einstein Brothers Bakery. Uh, it's another good one to stop at. I Can, uh, can I weigh it. in? Can I weigh in on this? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, Sean, I would tell you that in my humble opinion, if at all possible... Every retail. How you doing, Pony? I'm great. You want a cot? This okay. is great. Uh, in my in my humble, that, that's always nice. Uh, that wasn't a uh, yawn. My, my, my humble opinion would be every single retail outlet, if possible, should have a facility in case somebody who's coming in to use the store needs mm-hmm. you. People have to poo and pee. It's that's a more the, mo- that's the it's a more modern thing. When I was selling groceries 25 years ago, the bathroom was in the back and around yeah, the corner. But so- you had a restroom for the people to use. But now modern grocery stores have restrooms. Ready to go. And they're labeled clean. and they're clean and they're ready to go. However, a grocery store is not a liquor store. And, and I would never, <laughs> I've never walked into an ABC and said, man, I really got to go. Do you have a restroom? Because there's no I sign could, that says restroom. Exactly. But I, well, which is exactly. it? Oscar? Uh, I'm against the guy because I think I, I would love to go into an ABC when I had to go get my grandma and yay and nature <laughs> called. And I would want, because think, my ABC store is a huge one. By the way, ABC where you are and where I am. Down here, it's a brand name. It's called the ABC oh, Liquor I didn't know Store. That. You're not buying at Costco yeah. anymore? Well, I do sometimes, but I... Because Costco I has booze. great bathrooms. <laughs> I buy booze everywhere. But I think <laughs> if it's a big retail outlet, if I want to have the option. you need restrooms. Yeah. Simple, simple math. All right, let me but ask you, you this. What about... Wait, no, hold on. I want to jump in here. Sean, do you have the traditional kind of liquor store that has the small... It's the small room, you know, that type uh, of thing? Y- yes. I mean, it's not my... It's the, the bathroom is in the back room. Uh, and it's, but it's a nice liquor store. It's, it's not a small, you know, tiny, I would place, put a sign up, put a sign up and say, uh, no restrooms available. No restrooms for right. employees only restrooms for employees yeah. only. And just put a sign up. It's not a oh, you know, hundred dollar minimum. Up, that's right. Dollar minimum. That's it. If, the, if the sign's up, you'll be fine. By you know, the way, so. if the urine looks like vodka, you're healthy. And, it's, and if it looks so. like Grand Marnier, see a doctor. And uh, Sean, based on this call, it's really not just you. Some not of us have no, thought okay. yes, some of us thought no. Let's go to uh, Chucko in Bakersfield, oh. California. Uh, it's just, yeah, well, you know, it's better than what hey, I got Mike, before. Hey, Mike, is it just me? I know. Uh, Chucko, All right, you're Don't act like a on. jerk with me, okay, Mike? Uh, I just wanted to tell you, the closest I got to a 4.0 in college was my blood alcohol level. <laughs> I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen. Is it just me? Thank you, Chucko. I appreciate that. Uh, Let's move on. Uh, (laughs) Let's go to... I just couldn't handle Chucko. No, it's, you know what, time and place. (laughs) I know. Mike in uh, Rockville, Maryland. Mike, you're on the Mike O'Mara Show. Yeah, good morning, guys. I wonder if I have have an Oscar couplet. I was wondering if you think heinous sounds like too much like anus. Heinous anus. (laughs) The worst chocolate chip cookies out there. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> anus anuses anus chocolate anus, chip, anus, cookies. Chocolate chip yeah. cookies anus famous anus great, yeah i do think you know what i have always thought that one of the charms of the word heinous is the fact that it rhymes with anus and that's yeah, what but, makes it but, so but, dastard but amos is different is Am- yeah. isn't amos a famous cookie yeah famous amos famous anus famous anus <laughs> and well, famous anus would be uh ginger lynn I'm sorry. Uh, let's go to uh, Notable. Ben. That's a deep cut, Mike. So to speak. Thank you. That's that's going back in the porn industry. <laughs> ben in Anchorage, Alaska. You're on the Mike O'Mara show. Hello. Good, good morning, guys. Hey, Ben. What's up? 
What's going on with you? Really? I actually, he probably got the feedback Friday's notification, so he might not be on message. Oh, I oh, see. Okay. That's, That's what I okay. call the what, term. What, what can we do for you, Ben? Uh, hey, uh, Mike, I wanted you to know that I I think that your verbal crutch issue is not that big a deal. Thank you. Um, hey, that? have you ever watched Judge Judy? Uh, she says, uh, just a second, I think every other sentence. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you, Ben. And it's not really all. It's really not about the verbal crutch. It was more of a general term. But thank you, just I appreciate a that. So true. Moving. That is just a just, second, just, Juju. Just, That's just, what Shineland Shine says it all the time, Mike. Just a second. Just a second. Uh, Nick in uh, Charlotte. Nick, you're on the Mike O'Mara show. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, uh, Nick. What can we do for Hello. you? Hello. Is it just me, or when I get my hair cut, and the lady, the beautiful young lady, says? So what are we doing today? You know, she's asking for numbers. She's asking for sheer blade lengths, gauges, all these dimensions. I don't effing know. Make me look good, woman. I I am with this might be the mm-hmm. first one that I commiserate with mm-hmm. in totality. I like someone to say, how would you like to look? T-, you know, and, and so when they say, what are we doing today? They are literally turning over. All of their intellectual activity to you. That's the way it's Sir, supposed to be. Sir, is this a lady that you've been going to for some time? So she's familiar with your haircut? I am a, a polyamorous is the word. I go to many different ladies, <laughs> but one place. Okay, that's not the, not the word, but I no, understand the, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, he, he, like, loves uh, many different, <laughs> he loves many hair different cutter. haircutters. I go to a variety of them, too. Yeah. You know, I have to agree with this guy. I don't think it's just him because right now I'm due for a haircut. And I will go and sit in the chair, and she'll say, same as before. And, I mean, really, what else can you do but shave this Yeah, there's shorter? no hair. There's nothing. So, yeah, I think that the barber is perhaps challenged. That's wonderful. I feel so much uh, better. Thank you. You're right. Uh, we all agree absolutely. with you. You're no, absolutely thanks. right. Fantastic. And, ladies and gentlemen, that is It's Just Me. And uh, we appreciate the two calls for that and also the zero calls for to commiserate on my current situation. Mm. It's not live radio. I can't expect that. But right. uh, we will leave the phones open throughout the show today. Uh, I'm not sure what to do to get this audience to reach out. I would love them to. But if they don't, what? that's okay, too. You what know? about yes. FO Fridays? And then the number. F.O. Fridays? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Do that. Right. Send a push notification and say F.O. Fridays. I know how we Tell can get to them F-O. to engage, Mike. How? We could let them use our bathroom. Yes, come into our <laughs> liquor store and use our bathroom. Uh, it, is, it, is it just me or am I on the verge of an aneurysm? Thank you. <laughs> it's the Michael Mara Show. You can listen to the Michael Mara Show at www.michaelmarashow.com. Stay tuned. Standing Entertainment Program. It's the <laughs> Mike O'Mara Show. Let's get down to business. We're on the entertainment capital of the world. We're a nerdy family. Like, I have the deadly peanut allergy, but some people just think I'm on a diet because last week I turned down a peanut butter cookie and the woman said, Oh, come on, live a little. <laughs> I was like, I'm actually trying to live a lot. <laughs> Not counting calories, just dodging death. <laughs> I have so many allergies. I'm allergic to latex. Found that one out in a fun way. (laughs) Yeah, my biggest fear is a peanut butter and condom sandwich. (laughs) And it's scary because I'm actually allergic to most allergy medicines. Yeah. I'm like the millennial mascot, right? All millennials' immune systems look like the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. (laughs) All fragile and exposed. Older generations aren't scared of things like gluten, right? Old people are made of toast. (laughs) This is Wade Byard, the public information officer for Loudoun County Public Schools. The Mike O'Mara Show has decided to start now. Please make all necessary arrangements to listen. This is the Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara. Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana. And now, without further delay, here's Mike O'Mara. Keep the lines open, guys. Don't lock them down. Uh, Live from the Pfeiffer Studios in our nation's capital, this is the Mike O'Mara Show, a worldwide radio show and podcast with loyal listeners who get it. If you're here, you're in the know. We are on air, on demand, and heard 24-7 on our TMOS app. 
which is updated. Am I? I mean, am I speaking too soon? Have we yeah, done? Mike, that's why I never tell things? you anything. Uh, it's okay. getting updated. It's getting we updated. We have the beta in our hands. That doesn't go public yet. Okay, so yes. uh, we got the beta on in the our hands. Stay tuned. On the How, verge. Do we, so we, we don't want to say timetables or anything no, like that? No, right? I would say that in the next three weeks, you will have a new app that's stable, built upon the PlayerPod platform. Awesome. So it's good now. It's going to be even better. You yes. can reach us, uh, especially today, at 888-920-MORE. That's 888-920-6673. The Mike O'Mara Show on now and brought to you by Cornerstone. I'll say it again. If you're not growing, you're dying. And we are proud to announce that Cornerstone First Financial is now licensed in Colorado, and still more states are soon to come. So whether you're in Maryland, D.C., Virginia, Florida, Georgia, or even Colorado, Cornerstone is there to help you when you need it. If you're buying, selling, or refinancing, all you need is Cornerstone First. They know exactly what to do, so even if you don't, you still come out on top. It's a fact that interest rates are going up, so all TMOS listeners need to act now to refinance, to take cash out, or to pay off debt before rates go up even further. Cornerstone First Financial is here to help. They can figure out your best financial moves and get them done for you so you save money. Approved by Oscar Santana, Woo! all you have oh, to bam. do is click their banner on our website or call Cornerstone First Financial 202 625 1221. Mention TMOS and receive a free appraisal at closing from the 202 to the Centennial State. Personal attention from application to closing, licensed in Maryland, D.C., Virginia, Florida, Georgia, and Colorado. At a certain point, we're just going to say the world. The world. Uh, don't wait. Now's the time. Call Cornerstone First Financial. Uh, let's get right back to uh, the phones today. Uh, whatever you want to talk about. Uh, let's say hi to uh, Rob in, is it Ringgold, Georgia? It is, Mike. I'm be, with, be patient with me. I'm really nervous. I don't like calling because I'm a rube. <laughs> don't don't um, don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. You are among friends here, unless you call and you're mean, and then I I mean back, and then it gets ugly. And ugly. Then I stop tape, and we have to start all over, and I have to do a goddamn soliloquy before we start the show. I've been listening to you for 26 years. Um, Good lord! Wow. I well I'm um, a Republican leaning, NRA leaning. But I love you. Thank you. Um, you right made me laugh. I, I have a son with autism. He's um, 15. Jackson turned 15 this last week, and you wished him a happy birthday. Cool. Wonderful. Um, it's delightful. And you, you, you guys just make me laugh. I don't give a crap about the political stuff. Um, you got me through a lot. Um, you, I listened to you before I met my wife. I have three kids now. You've moved me from the Sacramento dance where I lived in Sacramento now over to Georgia. Um, oh, that's wonderful. I'm probably not making any sense, but I just you wanted are. to call and, to, and tell You're you guys. Um, You're being kind. I can use a little kindness today, to be honest with you. Sometimes we need it. It's, uh, it's very nice for you uh, to say that. Um, I don't think I mentioned this in the statement before. Uh, Rob, thank you so much. That was very good. I, I, got, one thing. I got one thing more. Can one I more. more. Okay, one more thing? go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, one more thing. I'm going to tweet it. I, I'm going to tweet it to you. Is it just me, or do I look like Rob Spiewak? I'm going to tweet it to you and Oscar in just a minute. Oh, but my God, please do. Please do. Rob, we will remember your name. Tweet that to Thank us, you. and we'll, we'll let you know as soon as you do that. Poor guy. Um, I really have to be honest. <laughs> um, Oscar's going to love this. He's what? told me this. He's told me this for two years. Um, the, the personal conversations I've had with people. People like Tab Patterson, Rob. I have to be honest with okay. you. Uh, that's, they say that. You know, if you, if you want to know what's really sticking in my craw, it's the politics of that. That's uh, that's not an isolated event. I would love to be able to look. I compartmentalize my politics every day of my life. If I let my politics inform how I live my life, I would never socialize with anyone in Cocoonville. <laughs> So please, you know, take it for what it is and understand it's my show. It's got my name on it. And that happens. Yeah. And, and by the way, it should be mentioned that this is a tough time for people that think like me. This is a difficult time. It's I, I, said Mike, to somebody I dare say it's the, a tough time for everybody. Well, not for some people. Some people are kind of cool. They're team one. They go off, you know, eat mm. some cherries and just go on with life. I mean, that's the way it goes. But. I said to these people, Oscar, I've had personal conversation. Oscar says, you just got to stay away from that. You got to stay away from it because it is divisive and, and it is divisive. So I can't change my stripes. I cannot change who I am, but I have made every effort in the world to keep it as light as possible 
You know, unless there's a major tragedy, please understand that, please. That's all I ask. Brian from Baltimore, Maryland. You're on the Mike O'Mara Show. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. <laughs> Hi. I just want to say, this is, don't worry, this is a nice call. I've been listening since 2011. I'm a bonus show subscriber. not trying to toot my own horn here, but been to the State Theater. I've even been to Quench for your karaoke that you did. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, that was a yeah. great night. Was, oh, it was great. At NOLA, I was there with you guys there. Got a boy. Um you know, all the meet and greets, and I just want to say, I'm with you to the end line. You guys make my day. Listen to you. Even if I'm a day behind, I'm always listening to you guys. This is your show. This is all of you. I agree with all of you in some Thank way. You, Brian. Thank you, Brian. When your politics and such, and uh, the people like it, they can have off. All right. Thank you, Brian. We appreciate that. Well and uh, let me say, I got one of those every five years. I can't do that every month. I can't say what I just said every month. I'm mm-hmm. good. That's good for me for a very long time because I wouldn't listen to a show where somebody did that once in a blue moon. I sure don't do it very often, but I did it today and I don't like doing it. I don't like doing it because it really, it makes me feel like, uh, I'm not, I'm not adhering to the first word rule of radio broadcasting, which is lie to your audience. Uh, anyway, let's go to, uh, Ron in uh, Warrington. Ron, you're on the Mike O'Mara Thomas show. Thomas Edison said that, yeah. How you doing? I'm the best guy in the world. I'm not the uh, Ron in uh, Warrington, you're on the Mike O'Mara show. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, uh, is it just me or Ponyboy still in denial that he really wanted to go to Japan? I don't believe it. All right, let's uh, go around the room. Uh, is it uh, <clears throat> is it just uh, Ron, or uh, do you think Rob that uh, Pony's in uh, in denial? That uh... so, what's your point, Ron? You think he didn't want to go? Vague, sir. Yeah, I think I think the whole trip to Japan put him so out of his comfort zone that he really didn't want to go. Because if let's... you really want to go somewhere, if you're passionate about something, you would again. do anything to do it. Anything. Okay. Very good. All and right, I, what do you think? I, what do you think, Rob? Spiewak? I think he genuinely wanted to go. Oscar that Santana. is my thought. Why do you think that? Because of the ramp-up process that we witnessed behind the scenes yeah. of the passport and all that stuff. I do think that, that was the, like just a week of a window, though. Eh, it was longer than that. He went through a lot of appointments. He had and stuff months. To, yeah, well, yeah, that's my just opinion. Just okay. right. Oscar, what do you think? Uh, this will be shocking. I can't wait what he has to say. <laughs> hey, don't <laughs> read ahead, man. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, don't read, it, read ahead. You know, uh, he changes. Changes, look, you know, quite uh, often. There has been some news that has come to light. You'll hear it in the bonus show that was just dropped on us. True. That has... Had me rethink, and I think you would as well, and we will discuss this further as Pony would like. Ooh, that's a tease. Yes. Uh, but, that's a tease. But I am now up in the air about my assertions, but you will see that the context within what Pony has divulged on the bonus mm-hmm. show on his own wit in his own will. Like this is just like as a bombshell dropped. I was like, what? This is new mm-hmm. this is new okay. information, man, new intel. Another um, reason to get the bonus show, yeah, sir. Uh, That's when you'll I'm, find I'm out I'm up what's in the air, man. On. But if I just had the facts you have right now, I'm with you. I'm with you, friend. He didn't yeah. want to go. If I just had those facts. But it's an organic feeling, story ever yeah, changing. Yeah. yeah. My feeling on this would be... Uh, uh, how thank about, you. Love you, guys. How, thank, thank you. Uh, you didn't want to wait for me, but that's okay. Uh, I would say on this particular <laughs> subject, how about that Masters? Uh, let's go to <laughs> Craig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Craig is uh, in Arlington. Craig, uh, Arlington. you're on the Mike O'Mara Show. Hello. Hello. I'd like to have an argument, please. All right. <laughs> argument clinic. Lay it on us. I'm ready. I'm ready. It's been too honest and open and weak and soft and doughy. Soft. And I'm ready to do a little fighting. Go ahead, Craig. Well, uh, you're supposed to say, um, we've already had an argument, sir. Oh, you're talking about the Monty Python. Yeah. Yeah. Go, Mike, yeah. what this guy wants is a sketch. Oh, you want a Monty Python sketch? I'd have to do Total Recall on that. I'm trying to think. You want an hey, argument? What sort of argument? <laughs> what sort Rob? of argument would you want? Yes, me. Yes, uh, no, intercourse the penguin. Say, you were supposed to say, we've already had an argument today, sir. Can I make a guess? <laughs> were you a middle it. schooler that talked in a British accent and recited a lot of Monty Python routines to your friends? Unfortunately, I usually forget them, but... Um, I'm trying to play along here. Would you please say, I'd like to have an argument, please. And then I say, or you say. <laughs> oh, my good goodbye. All right. Thank you. Ladies right. and Would gentlemen, you like to hear my Graham, Graham Chapman on the phone. 
<laughs> Would you like to hear my soliloquy that I still remember? That one of the few yeah. uh, lines of dialogue that I remember from my school play where we did a Monty Python send up of Shakespeare. Yes. And I had my opening soliloquy Please. before I kill my friend John Bernie, and he dies on stage and takes 10 minutes to do it. Sustain we now a description of a time when Petty lost an overweening tyranny offend the ruck of state. Thus fly we now, as oft with Phoebus did, fed Ostropy unto proud Flanders' court. Fair set for England and for war. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very uh, much. Is that actual uh, Shakespeare, or is that something you wrote? No, that's something Monty Python wrote. Oh, uh, okay. Marcus Sert is calling. He wants to weigh in. Yes, Sert, Marcus. Uh, hey, Marcus he never up. met a, a controversial day that he didn't want to jump in on. Go ahead, Marcus. I don't want any controversy. I just want to know if it's just me in the world that we live in right now where we're talking about trying to keep kids safe in schools from guns. Why have we yet to not figure out how to put safety belts in school buses? Mm. Ah, good question. Uh, all right. Uh, if Carla was here, Marcus... She would probably agree with you. We were on a shuttle bus going to like a show where they, mm. you know, where they use school buses, and I think she brought that up. Why aren't there, why well, aren't there, there seatbelts on school I buses? I think Loudoun County has them now. You actually, could, oh, you can't right. brake check your kids if they're being rude if you've got seatbelts. That's true. That's known as the O'Mara method. No, hold on. I think if you had a seatbelt, Oscar, you could still snap their little heads forward by uh, yeah. by pumping the brake. <laughs> shoulder strap. At, yeah. the stop, at the stop sign. You know. yeah. Hey, by the way, Mar Marcus, I have to tell you, Carla was uh, was speaking about uh, Fenway Park uh, optimistically, so I hope you were legit about that. I'd like to do that this summer. Absolutely. We're going to guarantee we will do it, sir. Fenway right, has seatbelts in their seats now. Did thank you know that? Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. What? Fenway has seatbelts in their seats now. No need to have those if you go to a game with uh, with me and uh, Rofo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I feel as though I have uh, I have cleaned the palate. I feel like everything Cleanse. is uh, Cleanse. fine. I cleansed the palate. Yes, and you've laid out Sorry. your man your manifesto. Yes. No. 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 We were saying Declaration of Principles. <laughs> yeah. He's not a terrorist. <laughs> God, when Oscar. we come back, two things. I will tell you about one of the finest medical experiences I have ever had in my life. I'm not kidding. Seriously? And I, and I will really ask you, Rob, and you, Oscar, and you, Pony, how difficult is it to work with me? I, I want honest answers. Oh, I can't Thank wait. Oh, yes. Uh, that'll be fun. Because I'm ready now. I'm ready to go full circle. I promise I won't get mad. <laughs> uh, we'll take a break uh, when we come back on the Michael Mary Show. Hey, it's Freights. This week, Mike and I have another heaping hot helping of political persuasions for you. We talk about the dangers of corporate media, Scott Pruitt's oh-so-affordable DC digs, and <laughs> Facebook saying, Zuck it. Our bad. You can download political persuasions on iTunes, MikeOMaraShow.com, Stitcher, and wherever fine podcasts are found. Yeah. Sweetheart deal, man. Oh, he got a good a deal. For a big condo. Uh, welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, <laughs> brought to you by eHarmony. Yes. If you've tried online dating, chances are you've run into lazy text messages, dead-end conversations, and random matches that never materialize. eHarmony is unlike any other online dating site. It helps you find lasting, meaningful relationships. It's not a shallow hookup site. eHarmony uses years and years of science, data, and psychological research to send you the right matches. The science is sound, and I personally recommend eHarmony to anyone who's looking for a real relationship. Our own Pony Boy has an eHarmony account, and he's loving it. You can't get to know someone just by looking at their picture, and you'll never swipe right into a lasting relationship. eHarmony brings compatible people together. That's why I love the site. Right now, our listeners can get a free month with eHarmony when they sign up for a three-month subscription. Just enter the code TMOS at checkout. Stop waiting and yeah. start your journey to a satisfying, meaningful relationship. It can be fun to play around with online dating apps, but when you are ready to fall in love, with someone and have a meaningful relationship, there's only one app that's built to bring you real love, eHarmony. Come see how eHarmony can change your life. Go to eHarmony.com and get started and enter the code TMOS at checkout. Love. Thank you. Uh, love, welcome love, love. Uh, back to the uh, Michael uh? Mara show. I will get to the uh, second set of questions after I do this because... Once I get to that, I probably won't get to anything else. <laughs> get heavy again. Uh, so um, I'm I'm home yesterday, and I'm I'm really kind of out of it. I I get done doing the show. I collapse. Uh, 
The Masters is coming on TV. And you did two one, yesterday under the weather. I did two. two. To do. I mm. promised Carla I would take my little guy, pick him up at school. I pick up uh, my my son, bring him home, and then I'm into vegetosis. And mm. uh, I'm just not moving. And I am hacking, and I'm hacking, and I'm hacking. And it just continues. And I, I did the math. I went on a website, and I figured they say four or five days after that, you got to start thinking. The, today's seven days that I've had yeah. this little thing in my chest. So Dr. I know Tom. that next to the Walmart, they set up a uh, one of these new little MediQuick places that's uh, like an urgent care. Joint. Cool. Right and near a couple you. of people have told me that the place really, really rocks. Not and, so bad. Uh, uh, it's about 10 of 7. I know they're open till 9 o'clock at night. Right. And I said to Carla, I said, you know what? I'm just going to go see if I can get a prescription, see if I can just get this out of my system a little quicker. I go to this joint. I walk in. I within ten minutes, I'm at the front desk. Within fifteen minutes, I'm in uh, given my information with the with the nurse. I give my within twenty minutes, I am back in the waiting room. Within twenty five minutes, I am seen by the doctor. Within a half an hour, I am given a prescription. Within forty five minutes, I have filled my prescription and I am heading back home. Uh, and I am here to say, uh, I think it's called like MediQuick or something, but I'm giving them a round of applause. Good job. It Mike, was spectacular. You're doing yourself a disservice. When you find a place like this, you hide yes. it. Well, you I don't don't tell anyone. <laughs> I'm not worried. Nobody's going to be flying down from Virginia well, think or Sacramento about to your come audience to my place. in Fort Myers. I know. I know. They'll be hanging out way, there looking for you. Now they're going to know. Yeah. The only thing I will tell you is that the uh, quality of the medical care, the doctor who was on duty, yes. like, it's, it's FOB. It, it, <laughs> that's no, usually not FOB. the doctors I no, find at those yeah. clinics. No. God bless F-O-B, them. I was once FOB. Uh, let me see. It would not be FOB. It's uh, H uh, HSL. Hmm. <laughs> Hard Scrabble life. Oh, okay. Uh, this guy looks like maybe he's kicked maybe... out of a practice. <laughs> uh, like he's rebuilding. Know. Because when you're I doing the late shift on a Thursday, I mean that's right. not really you know that's not what's the guy that sure. takes Wednesday to, what's to one, golf. What's one malpractice? Yeah, you know. I'm not what's that? Sure. <laughs> the insurance hasn't come through, so until then, I'm going to be at MediQuick, <laughs> and I'll be working Thursdays from five till close. And let's mopping. go to Ben in uh, Newton, Kansas. Ben, you're on the Mike O'Mara show. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Hi. Hi there. Hello there. Hi. Sorry, I uh, sometimes tend to talk like that when I'm uh, on the phone. Um, this is Ben way, McDaniel, this is ben right? McDaniel. Hey, yeah, yes. I knew it was. Woo. I recognize. I recognize your speaking voice because I know your singing voice. I remember that. Right. Yeah, I kind of sing like that too. Um, mm-hmm. I do have a real. Is it just me? But it's. Uh, it's. Uh, hopefully, it'll be understandable. It's kind of strange. So maybe it is just me. Please. Okay. Um, does it take longer to go home, to drive home from somewhere than to get somewhere? Um, so let me explain just a little. My mom does this too. Uh, when I go somewhere, when I drive somewhere, I take the fastest, most direct route. And, but when I go home, I, I tend to take other roads, um, kind of back roads, and I, I will stop at a gas station. I don't know what it is. If maybe I don't like my house or what it is. I'm going to jump in, Ben. I'm going I'm to jump in on you right now. It is not just you. It no. is me, too. I agree. I feel that way. When I am going to a location, and I'll give you a classic example, picking up my kid at school. Once that uh, task has been accomplished, or if I'm going to a show, or I'm going to anything where I have to be somewhere, the uh, you know I am trying to get to the journey as quickly as possible. That's why when the only exception to that rule would be long trips when you're coming back from a vacation mm-hmm. or you're coming back from visiting family. When you And that's why it really sucks when you're coming back from a destination and you want to get there soon. It feels like it's taking longer, too. Yeah. But no, I think, he, I think he's absolutely right. Yeah. What do you think? 100, 100%. You know, I come in on the uh, Greenway and the toll road, the most direct highway system to get here because we have our hard start time. But when I go home, I actually take literally a scenic route. I I drive through neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. I go through woods. I like the drive. It also adds about 12 or 15 minutes to the ride. But, yeah, if you don't have a hard time to get somewhere and you relax, of course you're going to take your time. But I also agree there is the psychological element that Mike said. If you're not going somewhere that you're excited about, if you're just coming home, it's meh. You know, who cares? So it does seem really matter. It seems longer. I think it's it's very insightful that you picked up on that because, I mean, I'm just – 
I, I feel like I'm in a hurry all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that also might be because I'm late How all the time. How is that? How uh, is that? that because you I'm trying feel to like squeeze. I'm trying to. Uh, I'm trying to squeeze a lot into a day. So there's a lot going on. See, I want to make the think, most of the time. I would think you would not have agreed with them because you have said I. I never feel like it's the. I'm the, that getting to a destination is going to well, be the, the fastest. That's way what of I. Getting that's what them. I said just now. Okay. Right? That I'm always running late. So that's the co- the root cause of feeling like I'm always in a hurry. Do you feel like you're in a hurry when you're going home? Yes. Okay. All so the time. It's, it's feel always like, like always like I. It's the, it's Is it because the of your groceries yeah, are after. outside? The, the, the something's going on. The package, an Amazon package, hasn't been stolen mm-hmm. yet. Like there's right. something. Right. Yeah. That I'm Oscar fighting. always has something to to do, so he <laughs> he runs home. Tell me about it. I'm <laughs> just gonna I'm just gonna go home and uh, you know. Screw around. So well, what uh, you do I for us is have, amazing. So to, to uh, yeah, know that. Yeah, you know what? Well, yeah, you. Just get home and get into that studio and give us more. And as a yeah. matter of fact, Ben McDaniel wrote this jingle and created this jingle for "Is It Just Me?" Is it just me? Thank you, Ben. We appreciate Beautiful. the call. Thank you, sir. Thank you. God bless you. That's wonderful. Uh, all right, now I dicked around enough. Uh, so, how hard am I to work with? I would say no harder than I am to work with. Okay. I think really? we all have our, our eccentricities and our foibles. Uh, mm-hmm. I would say sometimes you are a bit unpredictable, and mm-hmm. that makes things a bit of a challenge sometimes, but I try to be fleet on my foot and, and catch up with it. But we all have our, our things. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, you, you, have to, you can't just get away with that. You have to really, like, you, you just deflected everything. Really tell them how you feel. <laughs> Why don't you go? <laughs> What are you doing in the computer? What are you doing right now? Um, there's a term. There's a business term for you. I'm just confirming that I have it correctly. Oh God! Oh no! <laughs> no no. Pony, okay. uh, we'll, you, you, you want to weigh in before Oscar? We might as well finish with the bit. Might as well finish with the kicker. <laughs> might as well. Might as well go last to the cleanup batter. Uh, yes, uh, Pony. <laughs> well, up next, Stan Musial. <laughs> Certainly, you've been the recipient of the most difficult uh, that I've been in a long time. Yes. Well, you know, it, it's no secret that you and I are two very, very different. people people never and, noticed that and you know we we discussed this that night after the big blow up when you called to apologize and i i think we both kind of came to an understanding that we we don't get each other all the time but when we do agree we are in lockstep i think that you know working with you is something i've always wanted to do for i mean a, over a decade i wanted to work for the show and i wanted to work with you and it's it's difficult at times, but then there are times where it's just the greatest feeling in the world. Okay. And and all right. overall, I love it. Oh, wow. I believe him. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, that was actually a better answer than you gave, Rob. Well, um, you know. <laughs> I hate Thank Rob, you. though. Yeah, I know. And I Don't hate you, Pony. <laughs> 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 he has to try a little uh, harder. Paddles. Yeah, get the, get the paddles. paddles. To be honest, okay. I was to try a little Sorry. harder because he's on a rung below me. But oh, once he goes, I'll God. start laying out the love stuff. Yeah. No, I really. Sometimes Pony has a way of like speaking sincerely that I just don't even. I'm not going to grill him because no, it sounds so honest. Well, I think it's it the, sounds the pills. Are, the I, pills are in balance now. But I feel like crap now. No, I you really mustn't. do. You must. No, no, I pick on him a lot. I do. I feel like crap. I. I we I, all Mike, pick on yeah. each other. Like, yes, yeah. that's, that's the bedrock of the show. Fun. You should. You're evolving as a human being. That's the, the first you, tell. All right. What What was the term? Um, term <laughs> looking up in yeah. your little Apple computer. It's uh. It's called in the business world the asshole factor. Uh, so uh, oh, yes, I'm glad a- he verified it. <laughs> Thank you. There's uh, there's an equation uh, that comes with this that you know many um, a human resource manager, many a culture uh, champion in any business would look for, and it compiles of this. And this is you know people have different um, iterations of this. Uh, it compiles. Scale. It compiles of this, Mike. Yes. So pay attention. Offensiveness. Ding. You, you do offend. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, appearance. I can't believe I'm assisting him with this. Right? <laughs> appearance. Yes. Team you, player. You look good, but you can be um, you can be intimidating. You can be in your appearance, yes. Right. Uh, ego. Thank you. Uh, body language. Thank you. Um, let's move on. How many times you talk about themselves or yourself? Aggressive. Wait, no, I mean, is that like that I do it a lot? Yeah, but I you do, do that for work, so that's kind of a push. That's kind of a push. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, that's all right. But, um, it's, but it's true. Aggression or anger? <laughs> Software issue there, Mike. Hold is on, something's stuck? happening here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> something, something has happened here. 
<laughs> I don't know what's happening. All right, go ahead. You yes. don't do this, so I don't, and I'm I'm not leading the witness, but I want to say this before you ding or buzz. Uh, passive aggression. You're very upfront with your aggression. Yeah, that's right. true. Okay, okay. So uh, I'm not passive aggressive. <laughs> Never would want to be. Mm-hmm. Hi. <laughs> I'm sarcastic, uh, which is the same, which is a related. No, that's more. Quality. That's more being ironic. I don't right. think anyone would see that as passive, isn't it? Ironic? Uh, yeah. H- hostility. Yeah. Big time. Smiles. What and, is that? And this is determined as like smirk, or the side eye, or you're being passive aggressive with your with your facial. Oh, I do that. Yeah. And I, but I smile out of joy a lot too. Yes. On the show. Um, and to be fair, you provide a lot of them. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate that. The creepy factor. Uh, you're not that. No, guy. not at all. I don't, I don't have the creepy factor. Never had that. Yeah. Paranoid factor. Why would Hold you on. say that? Something, I don't know what's going on. Something's going on here. Something's going on. Oh, that, was, that, that is good. That was a loud. That's Defcon yeah. Five. You can't really do this without being a little paranoid. <laughs> Mike, one time I went to the library and I said, "Do you have any books on paranoia?" They said, "They're right behind you." <laughs> okay, bad <laughs> joke, Rob. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Brag factor. Uh, 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 a little bit, because again, it's part of the business. That is, so that's a, a push. little bit. I say that's a push. Okay. The well, next what's a push, like not not a ding or a buzz. Right. Yes. Ne- I don't brag that much. <laughs> the next is liar. You don't lie. No. I will say that. Okay. All right. Uh, r- righteousness. Amen, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Uh, this is where you win. Bigotry factor. Okay. Oh, none yeah. of that. You don't have that. I, so I if you were going to do this at home and you're going to take this to uh, one of your loved ones or a coworker, uh, you would you would actually you would give them points for their answers. Okay. And then if you were above a five, um, your your high you will be considered high exposure for the asshole factor. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I got nothing better. You see? I got nothing better. That's like a Christmas present. That's fantastic. <laughs> and I'm not going to dispute it. That's awesome. I love I like that he that brought science to the table. That's, uh, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's called picking up the slack of our listeners. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll take a break and come back with uh, more fun. Pony, do you want to review Far Cry when we come back finally? Sure, let's do it. Let's do that. We'll do that when okay. we come back on the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. I'm an a-hole. <laughs> it's Tony and Gary. Hey there, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, it's me, it's Tony P. Yes, yes, it's Gary S. And on this week's episode of the show, Oscar Santana drops Woo! by from the Mike O'Mara yeah. Show, Tech 420, Big O and Dookie, all those oh, shows God, and many more. We talked to Oscar about his lovely wife, who I don't think he appreciates the way he should. I don't think he gives Sharon her just due. <laughs> or show, whatever it is. All that and much more. We celebrate pink on this episode of the show. Check it out, TonyPerkinsShow.com. Subscribe on iTunes and download the Tony Perkins Show app. The Tony Perkins Show. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Here is a fact. Good oral health impacts your overall health. So why aren't you brushing your teeth properly? Why? Why? Answer that. Be smart. Start brushing better today. All you need is Quip, the company that's refreshing the way people brush their teeth. Quip is an electric toothbrush that packs premium vibration and timer features into an ultra-slim design at half the cost of bulkier brushes. Quip is sleek and elegant and so well-designed, it makes brushing your teeth a pleasure. I love my Quip. Quip is backed by leading dentists and was one of Time Magazine's best inventions of 2016. They also won a GQ Grooming Award and made it onto Oprah's 2017 New Year's Outlet. Best of all, Quip starts at just $25. Go right now to getquip.com slash TMOS to get your first refill pack free with a Quip electric toothbrush. Listen again, your first refill pack free at getquip.com slash TMOS. That's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash TMOS. Support TMOS by supporting Quip. It will make you smile like never before. Thank you, Quip. I got Welcome my refill yesterday, and it's so yeah. easy to change. They even send you a battery. I mean, oh, so you wonderful. never have to worry about it. It's just oh. so easy to do. You're ready to brush your teeth at all times. Um, for you gamers out there, we rarely, rarely, rarely talk about uh, video games, but uh, Pony and I uh, share 
the uh, the love of this particular little ditty called Far Cry 5. Ah. And uh, it's a uh, pony. You can jump in and correct me if I'm wrong here, but it would be called a uh, a a first person shooter. Would that be the? Uh, yeah, it's it's yeah, in it's kind of an it. open world first person shooter, meaning that you get to run around and do all sorts of missions and tasks as opposed to being, you know, put on one track where you're mm-hmm. just moving through a solid game and it it's it's very open and and much more enjoyable, I think. It says here on the back, fight to free Hope County, Montana <laughs> from a fantastic <laughs> doomsday cult. As you build your resistance, the ever evolving world will shape your story. In ways you'll never see coming. Fight alongside allies with the four hire system. Choose your team from guns, fangs, or a friend for hire. Fangs? Hey, yeah, I haven't seen animals. the fangs. Like a, like a vampire thing? Oh, like uh, bears or a uh, dog and sure. a tiger oh. as well. Mm-hmm. Take down the cult with iconic weapons and vehicles throughout the open world. All right, uh, let's, let's get to it. Um, I played Far Cry 4. And was Far Cry Four the one where you get uh, the the girl in the end, or was that, that was uh, a three? I think that was three. three. That was Far three. Cry Four right. was in India, like in the Himalayas. Yeah. Okay. So Far Cry Three you get was hummus. the one where you where you get the the lady <laughs> How at the dare end. You? And, oh, nothing. And no. by and, and and the thing about Far Cry Three was that y- you you would ca- occasionally go back to this girl, and it was kind of fun because it was. I'd never played a video your, game. I remember your enthusiasm. Yeah. 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 You had I'd to never choose. Played... Yeah, oh, that's right. Choose. There was a you choice. You choose your own adventure with her yeah. or... And it was actually a, a morality uh, yeah. choice if you look, yeah. if you dig deeper into the game. Yeah, definitely. Because right. it would lead you into a separate path, almost a separate game. And I mm-hmm. failed. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And then Far Cry 4 was... Uh, a few different twists and stuff, and you get to mm-hmm. drive vehicles, but it was like on and on. And I find Far Cry 5 is kind of the same I agree stuff, with you. The bloom right? is off the rose. It's just meh. It's just, yeah. you know what? It's just all right for me, dog. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the way I feel about Far Cry 5. They, they, it, I, I saw this one, and I, I was really excited about it because uh, it, so was I. it's in the United States of America, which is something they've never done. They always choose in Bolivia, really Alaska. exotic um, locations, and this is like right in our backyard. And I thought, Yeah, Montana, baby. Yeah, and they, they right. You could go like shoot in, David Letterman. If you mm-hmm. want to. It'd be yeah, great. it'd be wonderful. And <laughs> I thought they would have a better villain in this. I thought it would be more relatable, but... This whole cult just seems kind of flat, whereas the last game, the villain was funny and like charismatic. You wanted to hear what he had to say, but this guy's just weird. He's it, just like a creepy it's cult. Leader. It's getting 7 out of 10 on Steam and 8 out of 10 overall. Um, That's because there's probably not that much great stuff out there. These these games, correct me if I'm wrong, take a very long time to develop extremely. and to get to market. Yeah. Have, and have either you know, of It you still played, is better than a lot of the stuff that's out there. Have either of you played Fortnite? No, no. It's Fortnite, supposed to be huge. That's what, that's what Robert is into right now. And because his gaming television is where I do a lot of my computer work, a lot of times I'll be you know right next to him while he's playing it. And it's weird. You travel on a is bus. Is it a shooter? Is it, it is a, a shooter. It's, it's a first person shooter game. But you travel like a party sometimes bus. on a bus that so, has a balloon on it. What is it, the battle bus? I think it's called. Let me look it up. <laughs> Please do. And uh, there's a lot of different musical cues, and you can make your characters dance. And there's very festive color. It's very very colorful. That's what I get from it, and he plays with his his friends. And uh, but I'm wondering, have you guys played Insanity? No, no. I- Insanity is the game where the uh, the podcaster uh, <laughs> starts doing a podcast and then uh, begins to take an amazing amount of crap online from uh, people and just. <laughs> Has a complete and total meltdown. I hope that's not and, a first-person shooter. That's uh, no, he doesn't have any guns in the house. That's so good. It's just, it's really just the, the the camera on him, and you see his different facial tics and expressions. <laughs> tics, <laughs> like Max and then, room. Yeah. and then and then his coworkers come to the res- rescue and tell him he's an a-hole and everything is fixed. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the way, that's the way it goes. That's getting eight out of ten as well. Yeah. How no, many? How many <laughs> out of t- out of ten ponies, how many ponies do you give Far Cry? I give it, I give it a seven and a half. It's still fun, but yeah, it's it's mostly more of the same, and it it needs more dimension to the characters. 
I'm going to uh, give it a six. I'm with Pony. I don't think it's all that fantastic. I'm sorry they're not better. progressing. It seems like yeah. it should be getting better and better instead of stepping backwards. I think they yeah, were worried I mean, of got, offending people. And mm. All they're doing is trying to <laughs> you don't want to offend people. Yeah. All they want to do is show new scenarios yeah. and scenes and stuff, but they're not doing anything real clever that's new. So What jerks. I give it a six. Yeah, big jerk faces. Uh, we'll take a break. Come back with uh, Oscars take right here on the Mike O'Mara Show every Monday. This week on the Mike O'Mara Bonus Show. Yeah. Hard ginger ale, well, hard cherry. Started with yeah. Mike's Hard Lemonade, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, I've and done that. Way, I'm talking about these new, this new line that's out that apparently is taking over the world. Don't my lemonade. I want to say you're welcome to consumers. My Hard lemonade. <laughs> no. Michael Mara's hard lemonade. Where do you think it came from? Okay, you think it's just podcasting in restaurants that I do? Uh, Problem uh, is, uh, now that you're getting older, yeah, not as hard. Not as hard. <laughs> Mike, this, this is... <laughs> The Michael Mara Emily's Bonus laugh. Show. Yeah. Because five hours a week <laughs> just ain't enough. Always <laughs> available at MichaelMaraShow.com. <laughs> Welcome back to the Michael Mara Show, uh, brought to you by Amazon. Some of you know that we have a new policy for Amazon for 2018, but we want to make sure that everyone knows that here's all you need to know to ensure that we get credit for your Amazon purchase. Just make sure that you click the Amazon link at the top of the TMOS website. Super easy, and that will guarantee that we get credit for your purchase. So start clicking. If you need it, Amazon has it. What's today's Amazon purchase of the day? I hate the cherry blossoms, Mike. I detest the cherry blossoms. They are No, gonna, you never like They're going to peak this weekend, mm-hmm. and that's all they're talking about on the news. But when I think cherry blossoms, I think of one thing, springtime allergies. And okay. they're about to get bad. If you want to save money, the best over-the-counter. What's that? I disagree. <laughs> the best <laughs> over-the-counter <laughs> allergy med that I have found is a Zizol Allergy 24-hour. And it is so much yeah, cheaper online. And, it, and we're fighting it now that the, the sun has not really come up, but the cherry blossoms have bloomed. Yeah, and so we're all and doomed. Yeah. So you can get two huge bottles, 110 tablets. For under 32 bucks, and they'll have it to you tomorrow. Huja. So did it. It's Zyzal. Z-Y-Z-A-L. X-Y-Z-A-L. All right. All right. Amazon really does have everything. You can find it at uh, the allergy stuff at the top Zizol. of Mike O'Mara Show. Zyzal. At MikeOmeraShow.com. So get clicking, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we want you to do. Hey, everybody. Hey, Thank hey. you very much. And now, it's time for Oscar's Take. Uh, Oscar's Take. Ah. The review and comment of the news is only our Bolivia and Blue Theater can do it. The reviews and the comments and everything from Oscar Santana do not reflect the Michael Mara show. It's listeners or the right-thinking citizens mm-hmm. of the United States of America. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado... Oscar's take. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand. understand. I don't understand his take. Oscar's take. (laughs) Oscar. Yes. According to a new study, your entire relationship hinges on who does the dishes. Seriously. The researchers found that women do more chores around the house, but the dishes break their spirit. So when their partner (laughs) handles them, those couples are happier, more stable, and they have better sex. Mm. I would welcome your take on this. Man. Hey, before he goes, I just want to... Get one of those in the bank. <laughs> I I would have to have our dishes done on a timely and regular basis to really answer this honestly. I know that my mom always did the dishes, and she's a happy woman. So this might be Supposedly. generational. This might be socioeconomic. This might be um, cultural. When my papa came home, there was no dirty dishes in the sink. And I know that because uh, he would come by and inspect the house, make sure everything was right. right. I go home, there's always <laughs> dirty dishes the in the in the sink. And I have he's to He's probably telling you to do them. And That's I'm no, I'm high, telling me. Yes, he's probably saying I need the dishes done. No, no, no. Um okay. I'm saying what what my wife is telling me is I don't respect you. I don't <laughs> care for you. You don't do everything, you. and I don't appreciate you. <laughs> I love the ya. It yeah. Is, uh, it is, I don't love you. <laughs> I'm not going to wear sexy underwear anymore, ya. Uh, yes, that's what, she's te- that's what she's telling me. Yeah. That's what she's telling me. <laughs> You're listening to Oscar's, Oscar's take. take. Oscar, according to a new survey, here's another one for you. Uh, a, a quarter of parents admit they have a favorite child. And uh, here's who it is. 
Uh, number three, the middle child or one of the middle children, 18%. Number two, their oldest child, 26% of parents feel that way. Number one, of course, is, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it right now. That was a little loud. Their youngest child. Uh, so what makes them pick a favorite? The majority of them say it's because that kid makes them laugh the most. Mm. And 41% say it's because their favorite kid reminds them most of themselves. Mm. I know you've got a large family, so I thought this was perfect for Oscar's take. So, Oscar's take. <laughs> as far as the dynamics of my family, it's, um, my brother's the absolute favorite. I and mean, he's the middle child. Mm -hmm. uh, middle child. He, he's okay. a middle child. Um he also, the Jan Brady of their house. He lost a finger when he was seven in a he horrific motorcycle accident, shit. or mm -hmm. half a finger. So that gave him um, power rankings within our family because sure. he had to overcome that. And I don't. And he's still overachieved. I, yeah, I don't begrudge him. The man. Which finger? Uh, I don't know. I, I stopped looking. I don't even know to be honest. With you. Uh, <laughs> I stopped looking. He got tired of hearing about. Yeah. However, I bet he doesn't bowl very much. <laughs> he no, doesn't but bowl. He was on track. Uh, the surgery track. He changed. He did everything doctors said he couldn't do, right? right. And he's a, a full-fledged, celebrated anesthesiologist. His wife is as well. They work hard. They do what they say they're going to do. They're responsible. And when they, my brother comes home, it is a king. He's welcome like a king because there are food, <laughs> there are foods and food groups that are made that I haven't seen in years. Wow! Right. So when my brother Just comes pat home, myself on the back here because this is a good Oscar. I they get did, there yeah. early, so I can did have a good job. So buddy. I can have some because else I get the leavings. Yeah, so I get there right it. away when he comes down. So Jose is numero uno. Numero yeah. uno. Numero uno. And okay, that's what there he is. You know, uh, I wasn't even, a, I'm the only child and I'm not even the favorite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're listening to Oscar's, Oscar's take. take? Oscar, Lamar Odom has a new business venture. The former NBA star who has battled a crack cocaine addiction uh, is investing in the marijuana business. He revealed in a new interview with the B, the Blast, not the Beast, the Blast. Odom uh, said he found that marijuana was helpful in his treatment and recovery for substance abuse. Hi, Mike. <laughs> While uh, going through rehab, I discovered certain strains, he said, that support oh. wellness. He said friends, associates, and ex-teammates asked me what solutions I was using on my road back to recovery, and that's when Rich Soil Organics was born. Oh, he said no. it's a perfect time to offer these cannabis solutions to the public who may be going through similar body issues as I am. I welcome your take on Lamar Odom's road to recovery. So I heard uh, this term in business school. It's called stick to your knitting. Know what you know. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea that he has decided to get into business of drugs, right? Drug and, business, and he he had a f uh, formerly a drug abuse problem. Sure, mm -hmm. uh, would say you know you don't want to get into that business. Right. But as we were we were um, we were we were taught in New Jack City, you don't get high your own supply, because if he got into the marijuana Amen, brother. the marijuana business, right? Um, that's a completely different drug than he was addicted to, right? If it was cocaine, right. big problem, red flag. Yeah, but cannabis, okay. Cannabis, different world, different okay, world, so and a burgeoning business. You thumbs up to yeah, uh, thumbs Lamar up. Odom I'm in. This. Wow, I, I'm, I'm surprised that yes. uh, you're listening to Oscar's take. Oscar's take. Uh, here are the millennials' top ten signs of adulting, oh, according I to a, a new survey. Hate when they uh, use it as a verb. Uh, number ten, being on time for work. Uh. Uh, number nine, moving out of your parents' house. Number eight, cooking your own meals. Number seven, filing your taxes. Number six, making a budget. Number five, paying for your car on your own. Number four, paying rent or mortgage on your own. Number three, paying a bill on your own. Number two, being financially independent. And number one, having a steady job. Those are the millennials' top ten signs of adulting. Uh, I just lay that out there. I don't think it's uh, anything really surprising, right? This is why you're failing, millennials. This is why you have a problem. Your, yeah, your, the yeah, goals you problem. have now are just, they were just given in the past. By given, I mean you just did go out and get a job. You were it's a given. on time. It's a given yeah. you it was would a given. do all that yeah, stuff. You, I'm yeah. with you on this You don't one. celebrate that like you're growing up. Exactly. I have a problem being on time. I'm not proud of it, but I'm an right. adult in so many other ways that I think it over, it, 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 it compensates. It overcompensates, but it also, stop with the scoreboard. Just do your job. Yeah. yeah, overachieved like your brother Jose. Yes, that's mm. why he's celebrated, go. and my mom there still doesn't go. know what I do for a living. <laughs> <laughs> you are listening to Oscar's, Oscar's take. take. And finally, Oscar, if you're kind of insecure about the size of your package, here's an uplifting message from McDonald's. Ooh. Ah. McDonald's in Japan tweeted out an ad earlier this week that is supposed to be for their fries, 
but really seems more like a metaphor for what you've got down there. Uh, the ad says, quote, the longest French fry isn't necessarily the best. Short French fries, curved French fries, crispy French fries, and soft French fries, all of them have good points. All of them have people who love them. As long as you value your own unique flavor, we believe you'll be able to contribute in your own way. That's the uh, McDonald's for that ad. culture. A little bit, yeah. 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 In, in well, Japan, there you go. Then they have uh, the, the panty vending price. machines, too. So True. <laughs> yeah, Let's yeah. really do that math. Um, <laughs> by the way, I heard... <laughs> I, I didn't take a deep dive. I just heard in passing about the used panty vending machines. Sure. And so you wonder, like, what actually happens, right? And it's, it's, it's I don't think they're really used. I think it's just some sort of uh, goo or glue that they use. To, okay, uh, that's too much. But, <laughs> Bob goo. But, <laughs> Bob Robert goo. <laughs> uh, a guy said that when he was over there, he said that he was next to one of those machines and he saw a guy buy, what like he was right. buying a soda, and he used it like an inhaler. So if if this ad is coming out of that subculture somehow, but McDonald's is involved, right. um, I don't know if they're necessarily happy with it now that it's be- become a national news. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I would say that, you know, everybody has a different type of look. And I, res- I remember as a kid looking at my brother and he had an anteater and being like, what's wrong with that? Uh, <laughs> and him yelling at me like, stop looking at it. I was like, that's different, man. Uh, <laughs> fire hose, fire hose. Yeah, but these days, like, really, I think that's celebrated. People say you right. shouldn't even get circumcised, right? Yeah, and by the way, if you find a French fry that looks like an anteater, uh, call your local authorities. Thank you very much. That's Oscar's take, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. And uh, we, we, we do have to take a break. Is uh, it true on. that the French fries that the tip is cut off? They're kosher? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Hey, this is fantastic. These are great French fries. All right? Hey, you must sugar nut. Hey, uh, Mrs. O'Mara was taping a special across the hall. Hey, there you, she uh, is. What did you want to uh, duck in and say here? I just wanted to say that I love you. Oh, thank Aww. you, honey. Oh, ask her if she's heard wonderful. the equation. Uh, have you heard the... Uh, no, you, no, you, don't you ask her about that. Oh, I won't? Uh, no, did no. you hear Oscar's a-hole equation? I win. Uh, anyway, we'll uh, take a break. That is back the best. With, uh, more, more fun and more thrills on the Mike O'Mara. Rob and Joe here, big fans of the TMOS fan club, a great group of people. You're buying gifts, you're sending Mike to the Masters, Rob is going to cruise, Pony is... Anyway, we would like some gifts. Sure. I mean, we're registered places if they don't know what to get us. Yeah, for example, Amazon.com. Bed, Bath, and Beyond. Yeah, Matt Bloom's Honda. <laughs> we're at Target. We're at Walmart. We're at Zoomers in Atlantic City. Marcus Serta's Podcast Emporium and Bakery. Right. We're at Oscar's Build the Wall. We're at Johnson's Formal and Bridal. Hey, did Tawanda tell you to say that? <sighs> Rob and Joe Show. New episode every single week. Rob and Joe Show.com. Bias things. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Michael Berry Show, brought to you by our bonus packages. There is a certain magic in the air, and that can only mean one thing. It's springtime, yes. bitches. <laughs> Time to go out and romp in the new cool grass. Gaze at the sucky cherry blossoms and a young man's thoughts turn to love. You hate warm weather, uh, but beware. The warm air and outdoor fun means the return of chiggers and ticks and maybe VD. And even worse, the countryside will be teeming with TMOS listeners that don't subscribe to the bonus show. They suck the worst of all, blood-sucking, slimy parasites that leave you feeling, at the very least, comedically drained. True. Sign up for the TMOS bonus show right now. Remember, the future of our show depends on it. Besides, you don't know what you're missing. It's the most fun we have each week, and it still has the exciting polony goodness that screams springtime. And that's nothing to sneeze at. Just go to MikeOmeraShow.com, click the bonus banner, you'll get access to all our bonus content, and you'll be helping TMOS. So please, quit sucking, and we thank you. The final audio vault of the week on Friday, April 6, 2018, Rob Spiewak. This happened a couple days ago, but was only trending last evening because someone posted it on the YouTube. Uh, do you know Nicole Wallace on MSNBC? I watch her often. I'm a fan of hers. Actually. She was uh, covering the uh, YouTube shooting, and someone opened a soda. And the way she handled it, I would call less than professional. You know, we, we, we are in our tribes. We're in our corners most of our lives. I think we just heard some gunshots. Should we listen to that for a second? Control room? Is that some- 
Not gunshots? Okay. Um, they'll tell us if there's something we need well, to, she didn't freak to dip out, in and though. listen to. No, but I don't think that when someone yeah. opens a soda on the set, you should say, I think we just heard gunshots. Well, I don't they think, might have well, had a live know. shot. She they might have know. had a live shot there. You know? I, I stand and, by and, my guns. And when you have, okay, just for perspective, right? <laughs> right. She's not there and she's being fed okay. an IFB. Mm. So if you're just hearing like a click, click. Mm hmm. For us, it's clear it's a soda. Of course. Right? Yeah, right? Or do you think that she thought it was a soda and she was being No, no. I, I it? think that she went, went right to gunshot, and I think that was maybe irresponsible. That's all I'm putting on the do table. Do you think she was too calm about it? Maybe. If yeah. she did think it was a gunshot, maybe she, she should have done something about it. I think it. that if she heard that and she went, look at that! I was waiting <laughs> for, her, been a problem, I was waiting for her to fall over. No, no, no. Well, anyway. If somebody hears... If somebody hears and you go run for your lives. Then I'm I'm concerned. But anyway, I, I do. I you have it, better ears than her, probably. It was uh, and a uh, better ass, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I like the uh, sound of the uh, the can opening. Now another good sound, and they kept relatively quiet during this audio, Mike. So you should appreciate it. There is okay. some talk. This is Temple, Georgia. Why is it that people always break down on train tracks? Why does it always happen? And I know. sometimes a, it really does seem amazing, especially like with tractor trailers. And, and it's like it's only like twelve feet. You just have mm -hmm. to go twelve feet less or twelve feet more. But when a semi breaks down on a train track mm -hmm. and someone has got their way blocked and they've got their smartphone and the train <laughs> is coming, oh, it sounds a little something like this. Oh, Sorry, I didn't mean to do what? that. I'm sorry. <laughs> my Bruce I Springsteen my was on that train. <laughs> I'm so sorry. He was on his my way to a game. Perfect timing. <laughs> I can hit it nine times and it won't play, but if I brush it with my hairy knuckle, it'll it'll go crazy. All right, play it again. All right, one I'm more sorry. time in Temple, Georgia. Oh. Surprise me. Oh, God. <laughs> now I did it on purpose. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Play it again, yes. please. I'm so sorry. That's, That's fine. Here we go. Here's the train, and I believe it's got a uh, was it, was it Bruce Springsteen on board? Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, it was Bruce Springsteen and Rush. Rush. That's, That's it. Here we go. Jeez. Yes. Damn. Damn. Oh, there yeah, we go. Now you're talking. That's the proper song for that, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I appreciate awesome. that. Everyone's okay? Hope you enjoying the Mike O'Mara show. Nobody injured. Lots right, of everybody. damage done. Video on our Facebook page. Worth a look. Worth Train a look. Train kept it rolling. Aerosmith live. All right, stop it. All right, I'm sorry. Good news, Mike. Jersey Shore is back. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> yeah, did right. you know this? Oscar? Oh, yeah. Jersey Shore family vacation. Everyone's back except for Sammy. So, mm. in order to make up for it, what they did is, I believe it was Pauly, brought a real doll. That looks like Sam. <laughs> yes. Okay. Onto the set. So this is the presentation of the sex doll that looks like the missing Jersey Shore cast member. It makes me feel sad that we don't have everybody here. We're on a vacation. It's Miami. I want to be happy. Yeah. So yeah. I have a surprise for the house, and I can't wait to break it out. He has a dead body. Oh, hey, Sam. Yo, oh, Ronnie, oh, listen. oh, my. Listen, 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 listen. If you're not a Guido, then you can get the f out of my face. It talks. Oh! <laughs> Holly wanted to bring this new Sammy in as like, oh, Sammy's with us, and this is great, and the entire family's here. But come on, this thing is weird. I have to say, of all the morons on all the reality TV, they're still my favorite. Because yeah, I do think like they're the most genuine. They are yeah. the original idiots, and they're fantastic. And now they're older, which makes it even more challenging for them. So yeah, the I situation might just turn 72. <laughs> and they have families. Except for Ronnie, he's got a pregnant girlfriend that may, may or may not be working out. I'm surprised that he would have a uh, child hey, out of Ronnie. wedlock. Anyway, yeah. uh, spoiler alert. Uh, Snooky and Dina threw the doll into the pool to uh -huh. get rid of it, and it didn't sink. And my favorite line of the entire episode, Paulie says, look, she's a floater. <laughs> uh, this is also on our Facebook page. Did you see opening day at the uh, Minnesota ballpark yesterday where the American Eagle landed on the pitcher? I did. This was amazing. I mean, th this pitcher, I'd be freaking I'd be out. out of my seen mind. This. Yeah. A, a bald eagle with giant talons that's used, what, for the, for, for the, the anthem? Is yeah. that what they had it Does out it there for? Does it have large talons? <laughs> Does it have large talons? And the eagle ain't following the script and, and, and takes oh, a wow. shine to this particular pitcher. Yeah, his name is James Paxton. 
<laughs> Very solemn moment and a patriotic moment and an uncooperative bald eagle. And when you see a bald eagle next to a human, you realize their size. It's yeah, terrifying. Well, I, it is. I yeah. see more bald eagles than you guys do because we got them down here yeah. mm. and we got them up north. And I will tell you, they are massive. They are absolutely, especially those talons, mm. they're, they're majestic. They truly are majestic. And this thing gets on his shoulder and the guy is composed pretty well. Well, the scary. anthem's on. Yeah, exactly. And so uh, anyway, I no injuries there, but what do you think when you're bringing a a By the a way, the bird. announcers got to really really uh, you know, compliment the announcers for their yeah. incredible masterful play-by-play they play when they're going. Oh, 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 solemn oh, moment. Oh, 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 solemn moment. Oh. Oh. Dangerous moment. Right. Watch out on that train track. Here right. comes a train <laughs> on a semi. A solemn moment ruined. Super. Uh, yeah, and uh, let us go. close. Uh, Seth Meyers addresses the fact that The Rock and Vin Diesel are still mm. at odds. This is sad. According to a new interview, The Rock and Vin Diesel refuse to act in any scenes together for the latest Fast and the Furious movie. In fact, based on what I've seen, Diesel refuses to act in any scenes at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's your Magic Audio Vault. Have a great weekend, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for another episode. Be sure and get our TMOS app. Uh, we are working on some wonderful new improvements. Ooh. Stay tuned. Send your messages for our Tuesday mailbag to Rob with the extra B at MikeOmeraShow.com and all regular mail to TMOS Box 32101, Washington, D.C., 2007. On average, each day, 96 Americans are killed by guns. Visit in every town for gun safety to find out how we can end gun violence in America. For Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana, this is Mike O'Mara inviting you to join us again for the best part of your day, the Mike O'Mara Show. Bye-bye, everybody. So long. Ciao, ciao. Before you go, please make a mental note. Today's show was made possible by the TMOS bonus packages. You can secure yours right now by going to MikeOmeraShow.com and clicking on the red bonus banner. Buy it or give it. Either way, you're helping out TMOS, and that's a good thing. Thank you, and go in peace. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. <laughs>